My first question, of course, is about Christine Lagarde. Uh, she has been nominated to the presidency of the ECB. What was your reaction to that nomination? And do you feel she's a bit too political? No, I think she, it's a good, it's a very good choice. I mean, she, uh, it's not because you have been minister that you're political for life. She's not been elected a politician. I think she has the experience uh, of financial crisis. Uh, she has the experience of having managed a big institution. She has the experience of having also discussed and dealt with politicians. And in Europe, it's important because Europe is not completed yet. We need to you know, continue in the construction of the banking union, capital market union, even the monetary union has to be completed. So I think it's very important to have somebody who is pragmatic, but uh, has the ability to uh, discuss and have a dialogue with the political authorities. Most economists do not expect more ECB stimulus in July, but they really expect it in September. Are they being realistic? And with Lagarde in charge from November, are we going to see more of this stimulus? I think it depends on the economic situation. It depends on the Fed also, because uh, if the Fed starts loosening uh, very strongly, there is a risk of the euro appreciating vis-a-vis uh, -vis the dollar, and that's not exactly what you want at this time of, uh, of this cycle. So uh, I think we have to wait and, and see how these two factors uh, you know, will evolve, in particular what the Fed will decide in July. So not necessarily um, ECB stimulus in September, in your opinion? No, I mean, I think not necessarily, but if the Fed is very aggressive in July, you know, what, why, sh why should the ECB wait for the new president? I mean, actually, maybe it could make it, its life easier uh, uh, if, if the stimulus was provided already in, in the fall without waiting for Madame Lagarde. The EU finance ministers on Monday might actually uh, nominate the next IMF head. One name circulating is Mark Carney. Do you think he's European enough? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I think we need a good, you know, somebody who is smart, competent, uh, and certainly Mark Carney has all these qualities. Uh, on the European dimension, I leave it to the, to the uh, finance minister to decide whether he's uh, European enough. Um. Do you believe, though, it would be a bit strange to have someone who used to be in charge of the Bank of England uh, after Brexit? Well, to be, to be frank, I think Europe, uh, we have an American at the World Bank. Typically, it is a, a European at the, the IMF. I think it should be a European uh, and a competent one. Um, I mean, Britain is still part of Europe. Uh, in this Brexit negotiation, maybe you know, they should first discuss uh, how to manage this before uh, uh, understanding what their role is in Europe. So I would expect this time maybe to have a continental European. But uh, I mean, that's, that's for, for the ministers. But Mark Carney would be a good fit in your opinion. Yes, yes. So, okay. On Friday, Donald Trump uh, reaffirmed that um, the Fed should cut rates in the U.S. Uh, and that central bankers from the Fed uh, were not doing a good job. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, my experience is that when politicians tell the central bank what they should do, the central banks tend to do the opposite, uh, just to reaffirm their um, independence. So I would advise Mr. Trump uh, not to do that if he really wants the, the Fed to cut rates. In the end, it depends on the economy. I think the last uh, job report was pretty good, so it doesn't necessarily justify uh, a cut in rates. And you know, it's probably right to cut rates when there is a, a real need uh, in order to support the markets, because you have um, 200 basis points left, and you want to use it immediately, necessarily. 